All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna have Rusty rip apart this one of one 507 AMG. This is a C63 507 with a rare matte white paint job. So this car is super unique. I mean, this thing is immaculate, even down to the paint matched license plate frame. Very beautiful. But like all the other M156 cars, this engine has fell ill to the cam phase problem. So I'm gonna have Rusty show us how he showed the warranty company that the cam phasers are bad other than the check engine light it through. So we're gonna show you the mechanical failure, we're gonna show you the codes it through, and then we're gonna dive in, rip this thing apart, we'll put in all new tappets, new cam phaser bolts, we'll rebuild the cam phasers, the strengthen plates, so this never happens again. And then we will put all new gaskets and seals in, seal her back up, and get this back to my good friend Anthony. This car also belongs to our editor, so thank you, Anthony. We hope you enjoy this video. We hope you love your car after we fix it. Everybody else, let's get started. All right, guys, we got our box of tappets. There's 32 that goes inside that engine. We have our new valve cover gaskets and spark plug tube seals. We have our new hardened cam phaser plates with the new pins and springs. We have four new cam adjuster bolts and we have the new cam adjuster washers. These are important, always replace these. I'll give you the part number here. And then here's the part number for the intake manifold bolts. These are one time use. Part number four, the 156 and 159 intake manifold gaskets. Part number for the left and right valve cover gaskets. All right. All right, while well, Rusty is taking out all the coil packs, I'm going to go over here, and we're going to start opening and oiling up the tappets. All right, and now we have to unpackage 32 of these. You definitely want to get the ones with the coating on the top. It helps. You can get the Black Series ones. I just don't see. I've seen them fail just as easily as the other ones, but the coating on the top is, is the most important. So let's begin. 32 of these bad boys. And we'll just let them pre-soak. Some people say it's not needed. I like to do it. I feel like it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and I put regular 540 oil in this. And then before install, I'll throw a can of MOS2 in. An anti-friction modifier from Liquid Molly. And it really does wonders with friction, keeping temps down, and just really lubricating these metal and metal parts. You can also check out all the liquid molly things we suggest it'll be on our amazon store or you can call and get it directly from us all right guys after you've made a complete mess on the floor with all this mercedes goodness we will add some mos2 to this i highly suggest using this every other oil change ceratec one oil change and mos2 another never at the same time and this protects engine wear protector and is an anti-friction modifier so MOS2, pick this up, dump it in with your tappets, let it sit, and then install it. All right, so you'll take that off. You'll pop off the child protective. At least that's what I always think it is, because it takes me a while to get into it. Just hold it back. Dump that into your oil soup. Just look at it. It kind of mixes in there. Search into it, attach to the metal. All right, Rusty is going to pop out all the cool packs. One, two, four. And then I'll grab this side over here. Listen to how we love that sound. And then now we're going to work on getting all of the valve cover bolts out. It'll be all these bad boys right here. We're going to take those out on either side. We'll clean up some of these rusted ones. We're going to cover the intake manifold and engine badge with our brand new 
liquid moly microfiber. We're gonna cover that up so we can set Phil's mom's cake pan on there to hold all of our hardware. It's not magnetic, but it sure does make you feel at home. We've used this cake pan in probably every build in the last year. I think like two or three years ago, Phil's mom made us some kind of cool cake in this, and he brought it up when we were working on his 4Runner F-150. Um, Phil is the owner of VRP, by the way. We'll put the link in the bottom. And just so we can thank his mother for this awesome cake pan that she wanted back, but we just cannot let it go. It's heartfelt, it helps us get the job done, and it really just keeps us motivated. Rusty's getting these really hard to get on the bottom back bolts. And how are you doing it, Rusty? Uh, you gotta be patient. Some of these uh, back ones here, you can't get an extension hang on there. It's, it just barely grabs that, that, that bolt down there at the bottom. It just lays flush with the valve cover. Um, so once you're on there, you have barely enough room. But as long as you go slow, you can break them loose. Um, and just work a little bit at a time, they'll come out of there. You're not gonna be able to get a, a power crew on there. Of course, he got the he got the easy side. We got this vacuum line here. But you meet, oh, and look at that. So we found some, you can already see it. Bam, look at that. It's always the intake cams too. These aren't the worst ones on this cam because I remember they were up somewhere, but look at the wear on the end of the cam lobes. And then if you come over to our elephant graveyard of cams, I'll show you a really bad one. Cause that, what, here we go. This one right back here. Look at this, this was, that tip will lead to this and it will just destroy your motor. This, just like what's in there, will lead to this. All right, now that we have the valve covers off, Rusty is going to take the serpentine belt off with a 17. And once he does that, we can put the engine at 40 degrees. Once the engine's at 40 degrees, we can set the cam timing tools on and proceed. Right there, and that is 40 degrees. All right, guys, Rusty has the cams laid out. And as always, this is what you wanna use. You wanna use the Liquid Molly installation paste and go ahead and get all, it's, he just has it balled up right now, but we'll rub it on all the surfaces of the cams and the tappets when you install this. And then, keep in mind, after about 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes of the vehicle running, we like to drain this out with a Liquid Molly oil flush and put in fresh oil. This is just for startup and just so everything new has no friction. Use my good finger and start spreading this in. I won't be able to get the backside yet. Get Rusty to do that when he goes to put them in. But you just wanna spread this all around all the shiny spots. And when it's like nicely coated, ooh, like that, that's how you know you've done a good job. All right, guys, you have to bear with me. I am not much of an artist, but as you can see, I have coated the cams with, again, the awesome Liquid Molly installation paste. All right, Rusty is going to explain to us what's going on here. So the easiest way to tell if these plates are worn inside without taking it apart is you can look at the tone ring for the camshaft for the sensor and look at the phaser, the gear here. If everything is perfect, everything will move together because it's all connected. But if you see how that outer piece I'm worked with orange is wiggling. And yeah, it's moving separate from the cam phaser. Exactly. So if there was no play and no wear, everything would move together and stay connected. But since there's play in there, that means that plate's worn. It's allowing them to move separately. And that's that cold start rattle you get because it's clattering inside of there. Oh, wow. That little bit makes a big difference. And then you can see the same thing on this side, that end piece. Even just minimal effort with the wrench is moving separate from the cam phaser. All right, Rusty's working on that side. Yeah, we're taking off the front cam cover now so we can access the front of the adjusters. All right, Rusty has taken out this side cam cover so we can expose the cam phasers and the cam bolts. Before we remove the front cam plate, we are going to remove this. I believe it's for secondary air. If you know what it's for, leave a comment. Just kidding, I know what it's for. All right, we're removing the front cam plate now to expose the front of the cam actuators. And we will be replacing that little squiggly gasket right there. All right, to begin disassembly of the cams and cam phasers, we are going to install a 
factory timing locking tool that slides in on each one of these cams and bolts right here. That will keep the cams in place and then Rusty will be able to install the alignment pin. It brings these two, as you can see there's, they're a little off. That's what keeps them nice and tight and noise down. But he's going to install a tool that brings them tight together and then he'll take this bolt out and then he'll be able to remove the phaser off the cams. This bad boy has been used and abused, Chicago and back. So this is your M156 timing tool. This right here is to lock the cams in place. This right here is when it all goes back together, this will time the phasers to make sure they're in the right place. When you put the phasers in, this right here will set the spacing of the phasers ring and that will allow you to put the phaser on the cam gear. And this is the plate we will use that slides in the back of the cams. And that, I'll show you on these the new cams over here. There is little indentations in the back of the cams. This will slide into both, and that will tell you you're in the right. You can see the, the notches. This will come in the back of the cams. It will slide in there. It will set in there like that, sit on the back, and that's how you know it's in time. We'll show you that more when we put it back together. All right, and now Rusty's going to lock the timing in place. Now put two bolts in to secure the cam bracket, and then he can take apart the cam adjusters. These are tight. Toit! So these would be 18 millimeters. Take a close look at these ceiling rings here. Sometimes they break, you can replace them. Um, they are reusable. But if you look here, just from me taking that front cover off, it has moved this ring so it jumped off. So if I would put this back together, it would be a low oil pressure condition for the cam and it would not be able to actuate. So while we're looking at it, we're gonna pop that back on there and just check all these, make sure there's no cracks, no breaking, and we're good to reuse these. And the cam phasers are off the cams. Alright, now with the cam phasers out on either side, Rusty is going to remove the cam caps. And you want to keep the cam caps in order. And we will swap the cams and rebuild this bad boy. All right, these aren't as bad as some we get, but with this being a 507 in the warranty company slip in the bill, we're replacing that. We don't like that wear. It's only gonna get worse. Changing them now is gonna prevent catastrophic damage. And boom, look at that. Look at those wear marks. All right, I'm going to pull the last. Oh, you hand me my box, please, you'll see. That one's bound up. That's not good too, these can bound in the head. That's why it's good to replace these. These go through heat cycles too. And they wear just like anything else. So we are replacing them. And now mo most of these M156s are in much worse condition than this car. But I mean, this car is low mileage, well maintained. A 507, so best of the best stuff. So your earlier generation C63, E63s, you're going to see a lot more exciting wear and tear. But this one, we called it early. All right, we are pulling apart the cam phasers to check them out. And look at that wear. Whoo! Even for the low mileage, that is a lot of wear on that plate right there. 
go ahead and separate it from that piece so we can see it a little. And you can see the new one is perfectly circular and that part right there is just worn out. New hotness, old and busted. All right, while Rusty is playing surgeon of cam phasers over here, he's gonna be rebuilding these and inspecting them. While he is doing that, we are going to see my work. I went ahead and got all the big quantities of oil out of the cylinder heads, so they are ready to accept all the new parts. All right, while Rusty is finishing up that, I'm going to go fishing for some new cam followers, tappets, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to fish for these and I'm going to start putting them in the head. All right, we're going to install our new cam followers. These are beautifully covered in, in MOS2. That amazing anti-friction modifier. And I like to spin them around as I put in there so it works that anti-friction lubrication in. Usually we don't go too in depth with all this lubrication and everything, but since Anthony is watching as he's editing this video, we're going above and beyond. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We we do it for everybody. Anthony is special, but we build all the cars the same. With love and care and a lot, a lot of liquid molly products. If this was Amsoil, it probably wouldn't even start up, but you know, who am I? And you want to try to do this without making a mess. It's, it's kind of hard, especially if you properly lubricate these before you put them in. Again, some people don't like to, but I care, so I like to. You can tell when doing this just how well that bonds with the metal. And the last one. All right, so we have the good ones and the bad ones down the line. Let's see the wear. And the freshness. Oof, that one is bad. And that one is really bad. Minty fresh, really bad. And we will put a link down below for these. These are hardened and stronger and will last twice as long as the factory style. All right, guys, as Rusty is like cleaning these up, inspecting everything, getting the new cam plates, I will tell you this. There is a difference between the intake and the exhaust. Aus is short for, in German, short for exhaust. So Aus, A-U-S, is the exhaust. And Ein is short for intake in German, E-I-N. So you'll see that right there. And that is the intake. So it doesn't matter which intake and exhaust, but the intake and exhaust cam phasers do matter and we will get into that once Rusty teaches you guys how to build these. Rusty is going to rebuild the last cam phaser and then he's gonna show you how to torque them. Okay, so most important step after you have everything disassembled and cleaned, ready to reassemble, you find the case here and your new plate, you're gonna match them up. And they are both labeled Ein or Aus for intake or exhaust. Just make sure you don't mix those two up or you're going to have a bad time. And you can see right there, both say AUS. AUS right there and AUS right there. So these will both be exhaust phasers. So next what you do is, you see this little pin here. There's also a hole. So just so you guys can see, because I'm an overachiever, you can see the pin there. In the hole here, well, most of you guys know what's going to happen next. Make sure that's together, seated flush, and you're going to grab the new pin that comes with the kit and put the center section back in and line the hole that's in this up with the parts in the backing plate for the new pin. So line that up, put the new pin in that comes with the kit. Also comes with a new spring. Make sure that goes in there. 
make sure that pin moves freely too. Sometimes it can stick. Um, usually it'll fix itself when you put a couple miles on it, but it can stick. Uh, another reason why we do an oil change immediately after because these pins can get stuck in there and need a little time to break in so everything moves freely. And this little plastic cap here, you will have to reuse that so be very careful that you don't leave it in the old one or lose it on the floor. Now you put this cover on here, line up the holes, find the back gear part and line that up with the holes and you're free to put the bolts in. All right, guys, Rusty's gonna torque this to 15 Newton meters. Just slowly work your way around. I usually don't go full 15 right away. I get it seated on both sides to about 10. Then I'll come back and get it to 15. Four more times and we'll be rocking. And we have our old cams laid out, all of our old tappets, all of the cam caps laid out in order. This thing is ready to go back together. Just waiting on this guy. I am going to take a commercial break. I'm gonna get myself an energy drink. I'm gonna get Rusty one. I will put them in the Amazon store as well. They keep us fueled up and going over here. And don't forget, Modern Masters recommends Liquid Molly. All right, Rusty has our cams fully lubricated, and we are about to drop them in the engine. All right, we're getting the cam caps in. Cool. And when we're setting these in, you still want the motor to be at 40 degrees, so make sure you didn't bump or move that around. And then some of these cams, as you're putting on the cam caps, it's actually gonna depress the valve. So you wanna do it very strategically, and you wanna do it nice and slow. No need to rush, don't wanna break anything. And you'll slowly want to sink these in before you torque them just so they're all even across the board. And last but not least, we will set this one here. All right, and we set our snap-on digital torque wrench to 10 newton meters for every one of these cam cap bolts the whole way. And you want to start from the inside out. And just like that. All right, and we are torquing the passenger side. And you'll see Rusty's technique where he seats one, gets it close, torques the other one, gets them both torqued to 10 newton meters. You're doing a fantastic job, Rusty. I know. Always killing it. Stay humble, my friends. And you want to do all four of these at the same time because that is one giant cam cap. 
All right, guys, and if you're like us, there's never enough time in the day. So we are stopping here this evening, and if you have to do the same thing, make sure you always place the valve covers, even just set them on, so while sitting overnight, nothing can fall in, drop in, dust, debris, anything. Better safe than sorry, just loosely set them on there, and we will see you in the morning. All right, guys, good morning and welcome back. We're going to rip these valve covers back off and we're going to jump right back into it. Are you ready, Rusty? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, guys, we have the new cam phasers built, ready to go. We got the timing tools laid out, the new cam bolts. These are one time use. Make sure you get these. And we have the friction washers. Ooh, the friction washers. These are, these are 100% extremely important. This is what keeps the bolts in place. These have a little bit of friction material on them and it really keeps the bolt anchored in where it's supposed to be also make sure that they come out because sometimes they'll stick in here they'll stick inside here and you don't want to double washer it so make sure that the old ones come out and these go on the back side of the phaser plate and then you want to again like rusty said check each one of these rings that they're good to go they're in the right spot there's no cracks breaks i think out of 50 or so we've seen one damage so you definitely want to check these bad boys and then promised you guys yesterday a part number for the squiggly gaskets for the front actuator cover the front cam cover there we go there's a part number if you want to pause here and write that down all right let's get going and just to show you how to time these on the old cam, on the when it's set in the back, there's two half moon sections here. You want the smaller one on the top. That way that bar, that locking bar, will go through here and line up with the cylinder head. If you have the big one up top, that bar won't be able to fit in there and you will not be able to lock the cam to put it in time. And the other reason we use this back locking bar is because the tool that holds it in the front cannot be used to hold the cams in place while putting on the cam adjusters. The reason being is there's an additional tool that goes on the cam adjusters to lock the spring, and we're about to show you that. And with that tool in place, you can't use the front cam holding tool, so you have to use the back one first. So Rusty's going to put the washer in the back. Yep. And then just in case you mix any of these 10 rings up, all four of them are the same, so it doesn't matter. The only part that matters is you wanna match up the ouse with the exhaust cam. Go ahead and put your new friction washer in there. Make sure it's seated. And you'll grab your spring tool here. And what that does is it moves the tension of the gear there. And that's going to hold tension on the timing chain idler gear so you don't get any chatter. Let me see where you locked that in there. There'll be a hole right there. Okay, cool. And it pops in there. Oh. And then you'll tighten it up as he tightens it these will come together and be straight because the teeth come down and align them so as you're tightening this it draws these teeth down into it and it will put the gears perfectly in line oh i trust you tighten that up and look how they just line up perfectly You'll see the gears meet the other gears, and then you'll go ahead and draw in that phaser. You only want to put these on hand tight for right now because you want to leave this front 10 ring loose like that, and the spring tension will hold the gear on in place. When you get this bolt almost fully seated, then you can relieve your tool right there. And like I said, you want one play right here in this. So when we put the front timing tool on, it will align the tone ring perfectly and then you can send the bolt home. All right, I'm gonna hold the cover plate out of the way so Rusty can put in his timing tool. You just wanna move these around. Voila. All right, and that is what it will look like. You'd spin those around until it seats. And now that they're in time, you can torque these to 45 Newton meters and then a 90 degree turn. You heard it here first, folks. 45 Newton meters and a 90 degree turn. All right, guys, after you bolt down 
the timing tool here and you bolt down the timing tool here. We will proceed to torque this at a 45 Newton meter and then a 90 degree turn. We really like the snap on torque wrenches. Newton meters does the 90 degree turn. All right. All right, Rusty has some new squiggly gaskets here for these bad boys. So with no further ado, we will. Any tips or tricks to keep that in there, Rusty? Nope, as long as it's a OEM gasket, it fits in there nice and snug and you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. That looks nice. Again, make sure all of these rings are in here. Sometimes they like to stick when you're going back together. Don't force it. See that one there is starting to just try and uh, fold over. And it should slide on with no resistance. Like a glove. All right, perfect. Let's do the other side. Good job. All right, we are all timed up. Rest is gonna throw some bolts in that. All right, and Rusty cleaned up this valve cover and installed our new gaskets. Look at those. Look how crusty these are. Oh, these are the old spark plug tube seals and they are just crusty. And we're gonna pull them off of here now and put on the new gasket and new spark plug tube seals. like a glove look at that looks brand new brand new i will tell you this out of experience this happened to my e63 back in the day these plastic valve covers will deteriorate over time or can some of them i some of them i've seen last a long time some of them seem to deteriorate mine deteriorated and had a tiny hairline crack in it and i could have swore that it was the gasket i put two new gaskets in it i couldn't see it because when it was cold, the plastic stayed together and did not show that there was a crack in it. Well, when it got hot, the crack would open up because of the temperature and it would spray oil out onto the exhaust and it looked like my car was on fire. And there was a crack back here somewhere, but I took it out, let it sit in the sun, and then I, I held it up to the sun and I saw just a hairline crack right here that you couldn't see with the naked eye until I let it get hot from the sun. So I ordered a new one of these directly from Germany, from AMG, and it cost me almost $300. But it did come with new gaskets and everything and new hardware, so that was cool. But yeah, so if you have a mysterious leak, check on your plastic covers. All right, valve covers going back on. Be mindful of the harness you have to tuck out of the way to make this happen. And do not forget, when you're done securing this, to put the harness back up on the valve cover where it belongs. We will snug them down. All right, Rusty's got his tool, and he is going to zipping in the valve covers. Don't forget the last one. Zip. All right, cool. And now he will go back and hit them all from the inside out by hand, boop, torque to spec. All right, now we'll be popping the cool packs back in. And the one thing you wanna check that I've noticed with these 
M156 cool packs is this little tab right here. If this little tab broke off or deteriorated or melted or just left the scene, replace the cool pack. I know it sucks that this little plastic thing could make or break, but I've seen so many M156 engines misfire and cause so many problems just because this tab was missing and the wiring harness was not, it would just back off just a little bit and that would cause an intermittent misfire and you'll be ch chasing your tail around forever. This right here, make sure you have it. First he's going to attach the ground wire that goes on the each, each front cover here. You do not want to forget that when taking these front covers off or you will be finding all kinds of codes. Let me see it right there. There's this bracket that holds the harness up and out of the way of the exhaust. I see these not bolted back up all the time and gets everything all melted and causes all kinds of problems. So make sure this bracket goes back on there. Don't be lazy. And also make sure all the wire's behind it. Like I just forgot. Do it right the first time or you'll learn to do it twice. If you don't have time to do it right the first time, you'll make time the second time. Good job. And now we put the intake Y back on and everything else. All right guys, we want you to check out this new launch device. This is specifically for Mercedes-Benz. If you drive a Mercedes-Benz, AMG or not, I would own one of these. This can read fault codes, reset oil life, clear any of the modules, and it can do some minor coding. We'll put this in our Amazon cart. So I'm gonna give this to Rusty, and he is going to show you the codes that we saw in the vehicle before we worked on it, clear those codes, and then reset the oil life because we're doing an oil change. All right, so click on Mercedes. Okay. Yes. System scan. Yes. It does take a while, but it's because there's so many modules in these cars. This ain't no Honda Civic. This thing has some t technology in here. You better watch what you say about the Hondas. I'll say whatever I want about those Hondas. Them Hondas are starting to get some modules in them. <laughs> <laughs> they've, been, they've, been, they've been giving me a fit. You don't, you don't work at our uh, speed lane too often. <laughs> Guys, if you have Hondas, we'll work on those too. Don't let Rusty scare you away. I will, however, make fun of your lack of modules. Six hours later. Okay, go read fault code. You can see the two codes we had here. Position of the exhaust camshaft bank two and position of the exhaust camshaft bank one. If you look at the cam plates when we took this out to re rebuild the phasers, those were the two worst ones. And that's what was causing these codes for the camshaft positions. So we are gonna go ahead and go back. Clear fault code, yes. All right, just to check, no codes. So while we're in here, we're gonna go back to the main screen and reset the oil life. Oil service light reset, reset service, confirmation of maintenance. All right, we're all set. Sweet. And now that we're done, we had to add this because Modern Masters only recommends the best and we recommend Liquid Molly. Mercedes, Nope. Boom. All right, guys, as we're wrapping up the C63 Coupe, we have to hear the cold start. And don't forget to support a good cause, Driven to Cure. Check them out. Anthony here, who owns this car, is a part of that group, and they're really raising money for cancer and all kinds of good stuff. And look at his awesome tag, Got AMG. Is that not the coolest thing? I think we're gonna have to title this Got Cams for Mr. Got AMG. Another thing to note before we start is this right here. This car is completely stock, but it does have an Eisman exhaust. 
Look at that. These tips are awesome. Now that company, Eisman Exhaust, they make all kinds of factory exhaust for Mercedes, Porsche, all kinds of stuff. But this, this is their race exhaust. So I hope you guys like it. Without further ado, Rusty. Listen to that unique sound. And we're gonna let it warm up as we have friction modifier in there. So the brand new tappets always are a little loud. And then once we get the new oil in there, that noise is gonna dissipate. And just listen to this thing. Wow, what a beast. All right guys, if you like this video and you like the C63 Coupe and you possibly want that done to your car, give us a big like, a huge thumbs up, subscribe and all that good stuff. Share the heck out of this video. And as always, mention a comment about Rusty in the comments. Tell you what, it looks pretty good at 60 frames per second. You can see every follicle. I gotta say, I am starting to love the coops, man. I think Anthony and Alex are, are working. I think they're trying to get in my head. Anthony even messaged me last night. He said, am I converting you? I'm an E-class guy, but man, do I love these coops. <laughs> test. When I say test, then you say test. When I, whatever I say, you say, okay? When I say test, you say test. Okay. So say that. When I, I say, say test, test, you say test. When I say test, you say test. When I say test, you say test. Testing. 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 Test. 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 You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You think Anthony would mind if we just pull this intake manifold off with supercharger on it? He is a little sensitive. He is a little sensitive. I want to keep it. Stop. Anthony, you need boost.